Greetings from Mobility Outlook and welcome to Mobility Conversations. Today we are at TVS Eurogrips factory at Valeripetti, about 18 kilometers north of the Temple Town, Madurai. And we are at the R&D Center. We are going to talk to Mr. Sivaramakrishnan, Chief Technology Officer, TVS Eurogroup. Welcome, Mr. Sivaramakrishnan. Thank you, Mr. Morley. Thank you. Nice to have you here in our R&D Center. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you for honoring my request. So, I, I visited the plant and I visited the R&D Center. So, pretty excited about uh, how things are planning out. So, I would like to know, like for example, when a company, when a vehicle manufacturer comes for uh, a new tire, what is the typical process, developing process? Um, yeah, so um, everything revolves, uh, when it comes to an OE new product development, Everything revolves around what we call it as the requirements book. So it consists of uh, technical requirements, um, the broad tire specification. Uh, OE customers many a times, uh, uh, they define these specifications in terms of sizes and a probable application uh, detailing, uh, which consists of what segment of uh, you know, usage you require, you require the tire for, what is the maximum speed of the vehicle, what is the power, what is the engine which is used, what kind of uh, vehicle it is, whether it's a sporty bike, whether it's a com commuter segment, whether it's a scooter. So there are many types of uh, two-wheelers uh, which are used. So if this is the requirements book. Uh, the requirements book typically consists of many sections. The first section is the technical detailing about the product itself. The second is the detailing about the vehicle which is to be used. Third is the performance requirements, what we call it as the performance demands of the vehicle. Um, these are the main sections and the last section is of course the homologation requirements and you know, uh, what are the requirements for global markets and things like that. Yeah. In this, uh, you know, in this whole cycle, where does the, the design play a role? Um, well, this is the starting point, right? From this uh, very starting point of collecting the requirements book, you move on to the next stage where you prepare, you understand these requirements, you use many standards, uh, you know, global standards, like you have the ITTAC uh, standard for India, you have the European standard, you have the Japanese standard. These standards talk about the various uh, tire dimensions, tire load carrying capacity, speed index, the rim usages and all those things. So using these standards, using the requirements book, you prepare design proposals, which will be pattern proposals, profile proposals, construction proposals. And you then get into a discussion and dialogue with the customer. Um, you meet the styling team, you understand the styling preferences, styling requirements, you come up with pattern options, you come up with aesthetic sidewall design options. Mm -hmm. Then um, jointly along with the customer, you finalize uh, artwork okay. for the tread pattern and the sidewall. Mm -hmm. And then the, we subject it to finite element analysis, where we do certain simulation studies, um, be it uh, endurance uh, capability, be it uh, the traction capabilities, be it the wear nature, how how the uh, tread patterns wear nature is, uh, certain advanced studies which are more into the vehicle dynamics and, uh, and tire mechanics domain where you, certain basic models require certain data like the force and moment curves or the magic, sorry, <coughs> force and moment curves or the Pajeka coefficients for the tires and all those things. So those parameters, we use the finite element models of the tire, take these uh, values, give it to the engineering teams of our OEMs, and they come up with certain more refinements to the tire constructions. And once there is an agreement on the engineering side from the artwork, then there is an engineering sign off that yes, the target design, target constructions, target compounds are good to go then we move on to order the toolings. Um, this tooling typically consists of a tire mold and certain building equipments like the drums, the, the um, dies and all those things. And once 
they are received, then we mm, uh, move on to the manufacturing prototypes. So that's how the, the kind of sequence gets built up. So the, the design piece, the design team is fully focused on translating the needs of the customer into what we call it as the engineering design uh, side of where the toolings, the tire construction, the tire specifications, the target performance uh, book, all these things are frozen and signed off. And then it moves on to the next stage of realizing this art to part up. So here I think there will be a lot of challenges like material selection um, because you have to arrive at the targeted cost. Yes. So how do you manage uh, um, this initiative? That has always, um, you know, uh, that has always been a uh, always been a challenging area. Um, we in uh, in TVS Eurogrip R and D, we have looked at it a little differently. The way we have approached it is, uh, we have a back end team which consistently keeps looking at the trends in terms of raw material prices and work on developing compounds and materials. Um, at the back end. That means they are proven compounds and materials with proven performance characteristics, readily deployable, kind of a plug and play solution, readily de deployable for a new product development. It is very rare that for a given new product, for a given model, you also kickstart a compound development process also because usually the compound development process is a slightly longer lead time process. So um, a new product especially for OEMs where mm -hmm. it is time critical, mm -hmm. the model launch and yeah. you know, mm -hmm. their experimenting with new compounds and new materials are a rarity. Mm -hmm. Of course we do do programs where it is requested, such a program is requested then the timings are built into it. But largely, these are plug-and-play solutions which we have, and which which are compounds and materials designed for certain target costs and designed for certain target performances. So they are available. These toolboxes are well defined and available, and the developer or the designer picks from this based on the performance demands, picks these compounds, constructions, and materials from our toolbox and apply it onto the product. Yeah, I think the tire industry is going to. Get into the labeling, no? Because the government has mandated that. Okay. What are the preparations from your end? Um, well, so we will probably be starting the preparatory work, uh, starting probably now, uh, because at the moment the labeling is more directed towards the the passenger car uh, segment, the truck segment. It is still not being extended to the two wheeler yes. segment. Um, so at the moment, uh, the labeling criteria is uh, is not mandated or not even in the voluntary phase. Okay. Um, the governments are still uh, still working on implementation of the more you know fuel uh, guzzling segments like the truck segment and the and the uh, car segment. But we are prepared ourselves in terms of technologies. Uh, we learn from from the other segments and. Uh, Inside our R&D, we have programs to do low rolling resistance, better wet grip, and all those things. So we do have platform developments, compound developments, aiming at uh, improving these uh, performance parameters. Yeah. I think you are working on uh, introducing a lot of tires uh, for new segments, you know, for exports, and also for the you know, premium and then high end bikes. Right. Uh, what is the roadmap for? Uh, the, the new product development. Oh, very, uh, very good. So, um, um, so we have a very clear plan that uh, we are already a very large and a significant player mm -hmm. in India mm -hmm. in terms of two-wheeler uh, tires. Uh, we are the bike tire specialists and we would like to replicate the success what we have had in India into the global markets. Um, by the end of 2025 or so, around that timeline, we envisage to have a tire for every two-wheeler available in the world, or at least to the most of the two-wheelers available in the world. When I say every, 
uh, I mean, it's it's giving you a kind of a larger vision statement. That does not mean that we go run after every bike and do it. But you know, I, I mean, the sense of the vision is to have products for yeah. the global markets. Mm -hmm. Towards this endeavor, we have completed the. Uh, product line development for the scooter lines uh, for the European market and much of the much of the Southeast Asian markets. The scooter line, the B Connect uh, product line, is, is our flagship uh, scooter product line. We are moving on with a series which is called the Climber series, which is called the Climber MXC uh, product line, uh, which is for the on-off uh, recreational, you know, uh, endurance racing and on-off uh, mud tire kind of a segment uh, where again the, the, the product development and industrialization work is complete and we are into the launch phase. Uh, we are then working on the, the head size developments are completed and we are finishing off the testing with the zero degree steel belted radial tires uh, for the radial sport touring product line global this is again a global product line it's called the road hound and um, this uh, will be launched during this year the entire list of products will come in this year then we move on to uh, super, super sports so the end state will be kind of having products for the sport, super sport bikes so it's it's a busy years for us days and years for us in, in our R&D center but it's all, uh, you are confined to a triangle, no? where on one side you have the rolling distance, on the other you have mileage, and then you should also have a bed grip. So you are uh, trying to know, expand uh, all the uh, these three sides. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, typically that's called the magic triangle. Yeah. Um, well, we don't con constrain ourselves within the triangle, <laughs> but uh, yeah. um, I would say, you know, this triangle probably it's multi-dimensional in the sense uh, um, it's probably getting into pyramids or if there are more surfaces which you can add to it, you can. But um, definitely these are critical, you yeah. rightly said. These three parameters form a very important, uh, as important uh, aspect of the requirements book. But there are others, um, other performance requirements also. Mm -hmm. we, yes, our aim and our goal is how can we increase the area of this triangle. Um, it is called the magic triangle in the tire uh, science and technology world uh, because at some point in time, you know, when you want to maximize wet grip, you compromise on rolling resistance Absolutely. and when you want to compromise, I mean, when you want to improve rolling resistance, you compromise on wear and, and so it was always uh, what I would say conflicting uh, requirements and hence you need to kind of strike a balance uh, but there are now uh, technologies which are available thanks uh, to the technologists working our, our, our um, suppliers, um, the scientists, researchers in our uh, labs who have come up with newer molecules, newer um, um, polymers mixing systems, uh, the silica mixing technology, the newer grades of uh, solution is BRs. Uh, all these things has helped us develop and the way we do the pattern development, the pattern designs, the traction calculations which go into it, you know, aqua planning simulation. All these things have put together a kind of a technology, what I would say, um, um, a technology uh, recipe. Uh, which is helping us to now increase this uh, area of this triangle. What do I mean by that is today we have, uh, um, if, if, if my rolling resistance index is 100 and my wet breaking index is 100 and, uh, and wear index is 100 again. So today I can develop a tire, one tire which can develop, a, which can deliver a rolling resistance performance of 120. That means superior lower rolling resistance by 20%, 10% uh, better wet grip and similar wear characteristics like 100. Um, so those are, so basically the area gets extended, uh, expanded and, and uh, that's where our focus is on. And we also want to achieve it using, using materials which are eco-friendly. Oh, I was about to ask you. The world over, a lot of companies are working on renewable materials. Now they used uh, pet bottles, crushed pet bottles uh, in tire manufacturing. Yes. Uh, I believe, I think you told me, 
when we visited the R&D, you are working on, you know, the what is that, drumstick uh, and also multani mati you know, that's used by women uh, as a raw material for you. Know, if you can throw a little more light on this. Uh, uh, yes, so our uh, innovations have been driven towards, uh, as I said, uh, spread around using nanotechnology and uh, uh, materials which are available in nature, okay, eco-friendly materials. Mm. Um, how can we leverage these materials and these technologies to improve product performance? Uh, case and example is um, uh, this uh, nano material, uh, which is available, um, uh, the Multani Miti, what you said, uh, which is available um, as, as a mineable you know, mineral. Um, it has got a needle structure. Unlike carbon black, which is more spherical in shape, this is a needle structure. The, the microstructure of this material is needle. And our researchers pointed out that when you use the needle structure as a reinforcement in rubber compounds, especially a, a material like inner liner compounds, uh, it improves the air retention capability mm. by about 8 to 12 percent for the same thickness, for the same. Polymer. We all know that you know butyl, chlorobutyl or butyl rubber has better um, air permeability characteristics. But uh, with the same kind of materials, just by adding um, some parts of, of, of this material, nano material, we are able to improve the air permeability. You have a patent for this? Yes, we do have a patent for it. Um, we have, in fact, we have about six patents in totality around nano materials and uh, and uh, natural naturally available materials another example is the smurungai oil mm. which is a very good substitute which, whose characteristics are similar to the aromatic oil and the non aromatic oils which are used in the manufacturing process in the compounds we find that the murungai oil has got similar or better characteristics and it's naturally available from the tree it's a, it's an oil from a tree and and we have a patent for that too um, so our focus is how we can uh, develop products which are superior in performance and also which is uh, which which enables sustainability uh, in 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 the long run. Uh, have you started applying these uh, new technologies or materials in the? Yes, uh, we have. We already started. Yes, we have. Yes. And what's the response from the customers? Um, so mm, we have not. Um, um, so our test results are very very good, um, but we have not gone a big way in claiming uh, that you know these are the things which we are using. But uh, most of our products today, for example, the nano material what we use, the, the patented uh, uh, material for the inner liners. In fact, we call it as the air seal technology. Air seal, air seal technology. That's that's what it has, and we use. It. Yeah. Okay. Um, how many patents uh, you you have now? Uh, we have uh, six patents granted so far, mm. and uh, we have about uh, That's in the last one year. Yeah, in the last uh, six months, in six fact. Months. Um, so the, our innovation process as a journey, um, you know, we as an organization, as R and D, uh, we strongly believe in innovation, and our and you know, India is a growing uh, uh, country, recognizing the importance of intellectual property. This is a, this is an era where you know the organizations have started recognizing the importance and the value of uh, of uh, uh, intellectual property. We have started this as a formal process within our research and development organization of uh, cataloging each and every idea and making an exploring the opportunity of creating an intellectual property out of it. Uh, we started this process four years ago and uh, today we are proud that we have uh, put in about 27 patents been filed uh, of which uh, um, um, I think about 20 of them or so are in public domain going through its uh, natural 18 months of uh, review period and about six of them are already granted so we have a patent uh, for six of our innovations. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about uh, no, the tires for electric mobility. Ah, yes. Uh, so that's an interesting piece which is happening in the industry today. Um, we have we see a big uh, uh, shift in the way uh, the the two wheeler industry is transforming. Uh, 
thanks to the initiatives of uh, government of india thanks to the our oe customers who have pounced uh, um, on this opportunity to develop newer models and newer vehicles uh, in the electric space um, this is growing i mean we all know that it's a growing segment and it will continue to grow and um, even at its very nascent phase we in our um, uh, research organization recognized that while the initial period of uh, of uh, the development phase of these products uh, will continue to have uh, tires which are common for ICE and and um, uh, electric vehicles um, we saw that from a performance standpoint electric vehicles will be very different because electric vehicles will not have the requisite vibration i mean sorry uh, will not have the vibrations uh, coming from the power train uh, or from the transmission it will not have the it 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 will have much higher torque on the vehicle because it will be mostly directly driven by a motor and uh, it will have very less noise coming from all this uh, power train and other things so you will need a very different tire and of course you know from a performance standpoint very clearly they will need better rolling resistance because fuel economy will be very very demanding um, every trip will be limited because of the capacity which you can pack on a on a, a battery so if you are able to develop a technology which which gives you more miles for every charge then customers will be more than happy to have them they may not be happy they may not be uh, it may not be possible for them to pay for it but because the technology itself is expensive but so at similar cost or similar uh, what i would say um, um, uh, you know um, weights uh, can i deliver lower rolling resistance again the rate of wear will be higher so can i del- deliver more uh, mileage so on the magic triangle if you look at it you know you will have to maximize the rate of wear and uh, and the rolling resistance um, we have developed uh, a product which is the uh, e torque um, so this is uh, also inspired from a circuit board so some of our uh, uh, styling specialists uh, uh, they got inspired by looking at a circuit board and said that uh, we will develop a pattern which will do i mean which will look like a circuit board and uh, we have that and it's been very uh, uh, well welcomed by by the industry at large um, we today achieve about 20% plus uh, better rolling resistance than the standard tires which we offer um, for the similar weight of our material available for wear uh, we are able to deliver about 5% better um, tire life despite you know the wear rates being faster because of of the acceleration deceleration cycles which an ev can go through um so we are pretty happy about uh, the first uh, uh, i would say i would kind of say it's like like we see in the iphones or in other phones like you have iphone 1 2 3 4 so this is e torque uh, version oe so there are much more to come in this technology uh, there are many things on in our backyard cooking so we will keep uh, improvising improving uh, this and coming up with versions of the product for the ev segment yeah when you organize a tour for me the organization i could see a lot of you know testing equipment you know to test the endurance the subject tires going forward how do you plan to expand uh, the rd center um so um so as you, as you know so we have the excellent material sciences lab we have the tire mechanics laboratory when we have the endurance and the, uh, durability laboratory um, so the tire mechanics lab we just now completed the expansion of the tire mechanics lab or what we call it as a tire characterization laboratory so the tire characterization is simply talking about the characteristics of the tire the stiffness models you know, the, the dynamic stiffness the static stiffnesses and the force and moment curves and rolling resistance and all those things um so today we have certain uh, uh you know facilities which are available we have just now completed our our modernization of the test track uh, this uh, uh, modern so our test track is 
about five kilometers from here. Um, we completed that. The next big phase uh, of our uh, R&D uh, enhancement is uh, in, in Europe. We have our R&D center in Europe, the technical center in Europe. Uh, we have made uh, significant investments there. Um, we are partnering with many uh, test tracks uh, to, to do various uh, ride and handling characteristics and drivability characteristics there. Um, we are partnering with, uh, institu uh, with uh, institutes of repute um, in multi-body dynamics program where all this data coming from the tire characteristics lab will be helped in making tire models and uh, used in vehicle models for our OE customers. That's another big investment and big program which we are running. Yeah, um, there is a lot of work in, in place. Um, as you know, we have a very big expansion going on for on the off-highway segment. So, in fact, uh, you did not have an opportunity to see that uh, part of the facility. A big amount of, of, uh, of infrastructure built on the R&D side mm -hmm. uh, for testing of those large uh, 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 off-highway tires, which are as large as seven feet, eight feet, those tires, those test machines are uh, built, you know, run out measurement systems and all those things are, are under the installation coming and we continue to build on that. Um, going forward, there are um, equipments um, on the dynamic side, um, like we, we envisage to have uh, the, the tire dynamics from the vehicle itself. So when a test rider is doing uh, a wheel force transducer and, and those kind of uh, dynamic testing. So those investments are on the card uh, going forward. So that would kind of sum up. Um, we we have a, we have a structured five year plan of how we grow our capabilities within the R and D fraternity. Much of it uh, actually comes from the business. You know, where do we want to put our focus on? What product lines and things like that? And accordingly, we keep uh, ramping up our technology. Well, it was wonderful coming here, Mr. Saramakini. Thank you so much for spending your time with that. Thank you, Mr. Murli. Thank you for being here, taking your time out and visiting our facility, My both pleasure. our manufacturing and r &D. Looking forward to hosting you soon again in our test track where we can give you a taste of our products uh, which we, which we developed. That will be wonderful. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.